Hey, welcome back to Gold Scratch. So, uh, one of the most important parts of uh, blueprinting an engine are uh, measuring and uh, every uh, connecting rod journal, main journal, piston, cylinder wall, and determine the clearance uh, for each one of them. And we do that by we measure the journals with a micrometer. How do you like my new micrometer stand? Brian Hambly was my good buddy from. Uh, North Carolina was watching my videos and noticed that I was using my vice and uh, so uh, based on that I bought a nice micrometer vice which saves me a step so anyway we measure the journal with the micrometer uh, then we transfer that measurement to a to a uh, dial bore gauge and then we check the clearance of every single connecting rod journal every single main bearing journal and particularly the piston to cylinder wall clearance. So that takes a lot of time, and but it's necessary and essential in blueprinting. But in the factory, how did they do that? They sure didn't do it that way because uh, a production line process doesn't allow that timing. And if it did take that much time, none of us could afford to buy an engine. So they use a process called tolerancing. And I'm gonna explain how tolerancing works. So uh, in the manufacturing process, and it's part of a quality control process, uh, they have a determination. First of all, they define necessary clearance. And I'm using the dimensions from uh, small block Chevrolet, <coughs> this engine right here. And I'm gonna have a follow-up. When I did the initial measurements, when I bought this engine, I didn't have sufficient clearance. I fix that now by buying uh, special bearings with extra clearance, and I'm gonna come back to that. But the first thing is the clearance is, dimension is noted, and if you look at the factory manual, we're talking about the main bearings and the nominal size of the main bearing shaft on a small block Chevrolet is 2.450, unless it's a 400, then it's 2.650, 2.450, and the clearance, <clears throat> tolerance for clearance is 0 0.0008, that's 8 ten thousandths of an inch, to 0 0.0020, that's two thousandths of an inch. Which means that as long as in the end result the you don't have less than 8 ten thousandths of an inch clearance or more than two thousandths of an inch clearance, then you're good to go. And that uh, any engine delivered by GM and the factory uh, back in the day, or even today, the process is similar, uh, will be between those two numbers. So how do you accomplish that? Uh, because the guys on the, on the assembly line certainly aren't checking that clearance, and they're not measuring any crankshafts, and they're not measuring any bores. How do they do that? So they have a thing called tolerancing. So every part, the nominal size of the shaft is 2.450. So no machinist or machine shop can guarantee you that they're going to exactly have 2.450. So there has to be a range of, uh, of sizes that are within tolerance that make that acceptable. So the shaft tolerance, as per the GM manual, I'm not making any of this up, is 2.4484, 2.4493. So the middle of that's about 2.449 which would give you a thousandths or a little more clearance, right? So that's the range. So the design of tolerancing is so that if you have the largest shaft <coughs> and the smallest bearing, you have enough clearance, you won't have less than eight ten thousandths of an inch. Or on the other side, if you have the smallest shaft, 2.4484, and the largest bearing, you won't have too much clearance. You won't have more than 0 0.0020. Now, <clears throat> yeah, when I made the original video, and one of the subjects of the video on this engine was that the original bearings didn't have enough clearance. A lot of people commented they follow the, the, the rule of thumb, one thou per inch of diameter, of, of shaft diameter. So if the shaft's two and a half inches in diameter, you want 2.5 or two and a half thousandths of an inch of clearance. That is a good rule of thumb. As you can see, GM didn't follow that rule, but in a performance engine, typically we like a little more clearance than the factory. 
uh, 0 0.0008 might have been okay for assembly line engine. Probably work fine, but uh, on a, when we're building a hot rod, we don't build 0 0 0.0008. And overwhelmingly, the comments when I made the original video were, I wouldn't even start an engine up with a clearance that tight. So anyway, so we're aiming for something between two thousandths and three thousandths of an inch clearance for a bearing that's uh, 2.450. So the idea is that if you have the largest shaft and the smallest bearing, you'll have sufficient clearance. Or if you have the smallest shaft and the largest bearing, you won't have too much clearance. So let's look at how this works out. So I made a little sketch here. And if you can see what I'm trying to show, the X is the shaft diameter. So and that's your, the black line is your bearing. The red line is the clearance, okay? So we're showing uh, the least amount of clearance on this sketch and then the most amount of clearance on this one. I'm not great at sketches, but it's a thicker red line, right? So, so if we take the minimum shaft diameter, 2.4493, 2.4493, and if the minimum clearance is eight ten thousandths of an inch, that means it's four ten thousandths of an inch on each side because the clearance has got to be on half of it on each side of the bearing. That gives you a, sh a bearing diameter of 2.4501. Okay. Then on the other side, if you have the maximum clearance as per the GM manual of 0020, that's the smallest shaft and the largest bearing. So the smallest the shaft can be is 2.4484. And that's 2.4484 down there, that same measurement down there. And if you look at the clearance, the largest clearance is 2 thou. So that means you have to have 1 thousandths on each side of the bearing. So if you had 2.4484 plus the thou plus the other thou, 2.4504. So now you have your bearing tolerance, 2.4540 to 2.50, 5401, sorry. 2.5404. So you'll notice that the tolerance on the bearing is a lot tighter than the tolerance on the shaft. And almost every time now we rebuild an engine that's 50 years old, if it's got the original crankshaft, it's been reground. And so you're subject to quality control of the machine shop that does that regrinding. In the case of this engine, uh, they weren't on, they were big. And as a result, I didn't have sufficient clearance. So that's how tolerance ring works. Every part has a range. The tolerance means it has a minimum and maximum that it can be and be within in quality standards. And on the factory process line, typically what they would do, a quality control procedure would be, every engine would just be assembled uh, with the, sh the shafts and the bearings without checking anything. They might pull one there to be 100 off the line and double check that as a quality control measure. And if it's out, then everything that gets made since the last time they checked gets quarantined and it's got to be done over again or scrapped or, or checked, rechecked one or the other and fixed. So that's how tolerancing works in the factory. So those are the clearances that a GM shows are allowable. But on a hot rod, we like a little more than that. And so when I made the original uh, video, <clears throat> if you look at this graph, the, everything that's on the left side before, these are the numbers I put up the last time. And the problem that I had was the second main bearing only had seven ten thousand seven inch clearance. And the first connecting rod bearing had 11, 1.1 thousandths. Now, the factory tolerance says 0 0.0008, so it's almost there. But uh, we're going to spin an engine 5,500 or 6,000 RPM, we like a little more than that. So what was the solution? In this case, uh, these are summit bearings, uh, or ACLs, race bearings. So I bought bearings that are 0 0.0009. This crankshaft was turned 10,000 under. So the bearings are, instead of being 10,000 under, are 9,000 under, and that gives you an inch, one thou more clearance. So after, I actually remeasured the crankshaft independent of these measurements. The average come out exactly the same, 2.4395, 2. Point, where am I over here? 2.4395, okay, the same. 
plus or minus a tenth of a thou on measurement. That's just a variation on measurement. And so by adding, using bearings, I did the same thing with the rods and the mains, by the way. Uh, so by adding, using bearings that are nine thousandths under, here's the clearances that I got. So the one that was a problem before was seven tenths of a thou, is now two thousandths. And all these bearings are between two and, and three, except the rear main is zero, zero, three, four. Typically we like more clearance with the rear main. It's a wider main and that's also where the thrust is. So that's typical, zero, zero, three, four is fine for the rear main. And the average is 0 0.0026. So uh, although the bearing is supposed to give us a thou more, this is 1.3 thou of clearance average. And now we're 2.6, so we gain 1.3 thou more than a thou. And what is that? That's uh, the variation in the tolerances of the bearing. And there could be a tenth of a thou in measuring, okay? In the connecting rod bearings, same thing. All our numbers now are between two and three thousandths of an inch. And the average is 0 0.0028. The average before was 0 0.0016, so we gained two tenths of a thousandths, or 1.2 tenths of a thousandths of an inch clearance. So that's the solution. If you have tight bearings, you have to check that. It's part of the quality control. And if I had started that engine up, pretty much the response on YouTube when I made that video was with seven tenths of a thou of main bearing clearance. Uh, and you probably would have spun a bearing, and I'm certainly not going to uh, take a chance on that. Now, one of my viewers actually gave me the idea to make this uh, video, and because his comment was, modern engines run uh, 0, 08, 0, 020 oil and a lot tighter tolerances, uh, a lot tighter clearances. And they're able to do that because the, the precision and the tolerancing is a lot tighter in new engines. Remember that when this engine was made initially on the on assembly line, there were no numerical control tooling, there's no electronics, it was all done manually and measured, and uh, other quality control measures used, but they didn't have the sophisticated uh, measures that they have today. And if you get a crankshaft reground, you're subject to the quality control of the grinder. And in the case of that crankshaft, it was big. It was overall, uh, I think seven tenths of an hour on average, but average is less important than your worst case. If your worst case is too tight, it doesn't matter if the other seven or the other four or five of the main bearings are okay, you're still gonna have a failure. That's the thing with engines. It's not a matter of you know getting most of them. You have to get them all right or you'll have a failure. So I hope you find that helpful. And uh, understanding tolerances, how the factory do it, they didn't measure anything. They knew that the shaft was made to tolerance, the bearing was made to tolerance, and they knew worst case scenario, it was gonna be within tolerance for the clearance. Tip of the day, one of the things I ran across when I changed these bearings, and I don't, the bearings are in the engine now that came out of this box. This is the original bearings. Whenever you change bearings for guys that do builds, always take the time to look on the back of the bearing and make sure that it's the bearing you think it is. Now, when you measure it, it's going to probably tell you if it's not right. Uh, in the case of the bearing that bearings that I installed, it said 0 .009 uh, undersize. And but there's another thing on connecting a rod bearing. A rod a main bearings is pretty obvious. The bearing with the groove in it goes on the top because that's where the oil comes from. And the bearing without the groove goes on the bottom because there's no oil coming from there. But connecting rod bearings, although they look the same, sometimes are different also. So there will be a suffix. It's very, very small and hard to see. At the end of that specification, there will be uh, a U for uh, upper and um, an L for lower. Sorry. U for upper and L for lower is what you'll find in the suffix. And before you install your bearings, especially if they come in a box and the eight, there are two sets of eight. They may be the same. A lot of times they are. Sometimes they're not. So check that out. Make sure you get the uppers on the upper side and the lowers on the lower side. Hope you find that helpful. We're all about 
trying to provide practical information for people that are trying to do stuff. And I hope that we accomplish that this time. Please like or subscribe. Thank you for watching Gold Scratch.